This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Fifty-two environmental activists were arrested Monday in front of the White House as part of an ongoing protest now underway being called. It's calling on the Obama administration to reject the Keystone XL pipeline. The proposed 1,500-mile pipeline would deliver tar sands oil 1,700 miles from Canada to refineries in Texas. Demonstrators are calling on Obama to reject a permit for the pipeline and instead focus on developing and clean energy. An estimated 2,000 people have signed up to hold sit-ins and commit other acts of civil disobedience outside the White House every day for the next two weeks. More than 162 people have been arrested since Saturday. Among those arrested was prominent environmental activist Bill McKibben. He and 65 others were released Monday after spending 48 hours in jail. Dr. Sidney Parker of Maryland was arrested Sunday. We are here because this is not just an environmental issue, it's also a very big health issue. And that's why we've come out today and that's why we're so committed. So personally, I have never been arrested before. I'm not, you know, I, I don't do this for fun. I'm here because I think it is such an important issue that it really demands this kind of action and it demands that level of commitment from myself. Also headed to Washington to join the protests are indigenous First Nations communities in Canada and landowners along the Keystone XL pipelines planned six-state route from Alberta to the Gulf Coast. An editorial in Sunday's New York Times joined in calling on the State Department to reject the pipeline. It noted the extraction of petroleum from the tar sands creates far more greenhouse emissions than conventional production. Meanwhile, oil industry backers of the project are emphasizing what they say are the economic benefits of the $7 billion proposal. Republican Congress member Ted Poe, whose home state of Texas hosts the refineries that would receive the tar sands oil urge President Obama to back the pipeline. To me, an easy choice for this administration. Either they can force Americans to continue to rely on unfriendly foreign countries for our energy, like Venezuela and the Middle Eastern dictators, by depriving, depriving Americans of a reliable source of oil at a time when gas prices are around $4.00. Or they can work with our friends in the north to supply over 1.4 million barrels of oil per day. Pipelines are the proven and safe, efficient source of energy. Best of all, this project creates thousands of jobs at a time when unemployment in this country is 9.2%. As the Obama administration remains undecided on the Keystone XL pipeline, we turn now to the, one of the leading environmentalists opposed to its construction, Bill McKibben from Washington, D.C., just released from jail after spending two nights there, along with others, as they kicked off the pipeline protest, founder of the grassroots climate campaign 350.org. His latest book is Earth, Making a Life on a Tough New Planet. Bill, welcome to Democracy Now! Explain why you were arrested. Well, we really felt like this was the issue, Amy, the, um, the best chance for the president to make the statement he hasn't really made so far in his administration about the fact that we got to get off oil, that we don't need one more huge source of oil pouring in. Instead, we need to make the tough decision uh, that we're going to try and power our lives in new ways. And so there are people flooding into D.C. from all 50 states in Puerto Rico lining up to get arrested over the next uh, couple of weeks. It's pretty powerful to see. Bill, last week I asked Cindy Schill of the American Petroleum Institute why her group and TransCanada are pushing so hard for the pipeline. She denied having any financial interests in having the project approved, saying API is looking out for the country's energy security. This is an excerpt of what she had to say. API doesn't have a financial interest in the pipeline. I mean, we're looking out for, again, the energy security, national security. We also see supply flexibility and uh, reliability uh, benefits to being able to bring the third largest resource base from Canada and our number one trading partner down to our largest refining center in the Gulf. That's the spokesperson for American Petroleum Institute, Bill McKibben. Who stands well, to benefit they from may this not project? Have any they may not have, you know, the institute, whatever it is, may not have a uh, financial interest, but the oil industry sure does. There's a couple of trillion dollars worth of sludge sitting up there that they desperately want to sell. Uh, that's why they're lobbying like crazy to get uh, uh, Washington to approve this thing. But, you know, 
I mean, let's be serious. This is the second largest pool of carbon on Earth. America's foremost climatologist, the NASA scientist Jim Hansen, said a few weeks ago, if we begin tapping into this, it's, and I quote, essentially game over for the climate, unquote. I, I don't know what more one needs to say about security than that. I'm not quite sure what kind of world, uh, uh, you know, what, what kind of security they're talking about once we uh, 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 push global warming past whatever tipping points remain. Explain what you feel are the problems with the tar sands and exactly what route this will take, where it will go, the pipeline. So the problems fall into two categories, really. One is uh, along the pipeline. Start in Alberta, where it's an environmental debacle. They've scraped off huge. I mean, I mean, when I say huge, I mean huge. This tar sands covers an area the size of the United Kingdom. Um, scraped off huge amounts of boreal forest, wrecked native lands and native lives, which is why indigenous people have been at the core of this organizing effort. Uh, now they're proposing to stick it in a pipeline and send it 1,700 miles to Texas. The 1,700 miles goes through some of the most sensitive and beautiful and important agricultural land in this country. It crosses the Aglala Aquifer, uh, uh, source of water for 20 million people, one of the great pools of fresh water on the planet. Um, you know, I mean, the precursor, small precursor pipeline of this thing has had 12 leaks in a year. Uh, you know, part of our job here is to prevent a terrestrial BP spill, okay? But even if all that oil makes it safely to Texas, okay, every drop of it that didn't spill into the land or water is going to spill into the atmosphere. If we burn that oil, we increase dramatically the amount of global warming gases in the atmosphere. And after a year that's just seen the highest temperatures ever recorded on this planet, after a year uh, uh, in, we've seen incredible weather extremes of all kinds, uh, that's just folly. You listen to the senator from Texas and you want to say to the guy, have you noticed that your state is in the worst drought, worse than the Dust Bowl, the worst drought ever recorded? Um, get real. Uh, and that's why it's it's why it's so great that there are people just showing up at the White House saying, President Obama, you can actually block this then. You don't have to ask Congress a thing. It's up to you. You can simply say no. We not going to give the permit for this dog of a project. Um, um, we're for once really going to stand up. Uh, speaking of Texas politicians, Bill McKibben, I wanted to play a comment of Texas governor and Republican presidential candidate Rick Perry, who uh, recently claimed global warming is a hoax. This is what Perry said at a news conference in New Hampshire. The issue of global warming has been politicized. I think that there are a substantial number of scientists who have manipulated uh, data. Uh, so that they will have dollars rolling into their uh, to their projects, and I think we're seeing it almost weekly or even daily. Scientists who are coming forward and questioning uh, the original uh, idea that man-made global warming is what is causing the the climate to change, and I don't think, from my perspective, that I want America uh, to be engaged in spending that much money on still a scientific theory that has not been proven and, from my perspective, is more and more being put into question. That was presidential candidate uh, Perry, the governor of Texas, Bill McKibben. Uh, Rick Perry's response to the drought so far has been to have a uh, statewide day of prayer. Now, I'm a Methodist Sunday school teacher, so I'm completely down with prayer. That's good. But in most theologies, prayer works a little better if you aren't at the same time trying to think of every policy you can do to make matters worse. Uh, it's, it's astonishing that someone's able to make uh, uh, George Bush look relatively smart about scientific things. The governor is completely wrong, of course, about the science. It's not only uh, uh, strong, it grows stronger with every passing heat wave and every year of record temperature. There's no scientific doubt. The only reason that anybody's even considering building this pipeline is because it's going to make a few big corporations 
an immense amount of money. And that's why those corporations and the Koch brothers and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce are lobbying like crazy for it. We don't have the money to compete with those guys. Uh, uh, all we have, the only alternative currency we have is our bodies, um, and that's what we're using. It was interesting to be in jail this weekend and uh, reflect, listen to some of the people on the cell block reflecting on the fact that the last time they were, you know, lying on the ground like this was in some church basement while they were out campaigning for Barack Obama in that fevered fall of 2008. Um, we're incredibly hopeful that if the president does the right thing here, it will remind uh, a lot of us why we were so enthusiastic about him and, uh, uh, and, and send a real jolt of electricity uh, through people um, that are a little, frankly, discouraged at the moment. Bill, you have been environmentalists um, for decades and acted on that. Um, but now you're getting arrested. Uh, why have you chosen to participate in the civil disobedience? And also, why in front of the White House now when President Obama's on vacation? Well, we'll be here when he gets back, too. We're staying for two weeks every day. This is the first real civil disobedience of this scale in the environmental movement in ages, I mean, as long as I can recall. Um, and even before he gets back, I'm, I'm virtually certain they've established a phone connection between uh, the White House and Martha's Vineyard. I'm pretty sure he knows we're there uh, because everybody else seems to. When we came out of jail, they handed me that New York Times editorial. Uh, one of the strongest editorials I've ever seen in the paper, just saying, Mr. President, block this pipeline. I think the message is getting through. And I think the message needs to get through because this is one place where President Obama has no obstacles to acting. Congress isn't in the way. He has no obstacles to acting and no excuse for not acting. It'll be the biggest test for him environmentally between now and the next election. It's emerged as the single premier environmental issue right now that people from every organization and every group are coming to Washington to help with. And the good news is that after trying to treat us pretty harshly in order to deter this protest from happening, the police are now backing off under orders from a judge. And so uh, the subsequent three waves of arrestees have been treated much more civilly um, and, and, uh, uh, than we were. And and so I think that it's going to only grow. Uh, very quickly, the alliance of environmentalists and labor unions that is growing right now. Can you talk about the significance of this? Um, uh, Naomi Klein just tweeted, this is a major breakthrough in green <coughs> labor alliance, two big unions opposed. She was, she was talking about the fact that two of the big unions uh, uh, last week came out in against uh, this pipeline, even though uh, 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 the, the argument for it theoretically is that it's going to create jobs. It'll create a few. You can't build a pipeline this big without, but it nowhere near the number that the proponents have been claiming, as it turns out. Um, more to the point, by continuing our addiction to, to oil, it'll send billions of dollars a day north into Canada and not give us the incentive that we need to put people to far, far, far more people to work doing the wind and solar work that will actually repower our lives. That's where the jobs are, and those jobs won't be wrecking the future. We have just 15 seconds, but Bill McKibben, you're right there in front of the White House. You and a number of students waged a campaign to get solar panels put back on the White House roof that President Reagan had taken down. Then there was a big announcement of the victory that President Obama had agreed, but they haven't been put up. Uh, no, we were, we were looking closely as we were being arrested, and there's no sign of them up there on the roof. Uh, but you know what, President Obama, right now that's job number two. Job number one is blocking this incredible pipeline. Let's get the uh, 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 nation's house in order, and then uh, it'd be good if you go to work on your own, too. Bill McKibben, thanks so much for being with us. Spokesperson for TarSandsAction.org so just came out of jail after two days uh, nonviolently protesting the Keystone XL pipeline. He is the founder of 350.org. This is